G'day there mate, it's your boy I read Reddit back at it again now with malicious compliance stories. This one's also one of my favourite subreddits, so I hope you really enjoy this episode. This story comes from user CrackBear, titled, Want me to answer every call? Sure thing, enjoy your wait. Background, part of my job involves taking calls from the public to offer various types of support. This can range from tech support to helping people find services in our country that they need. My team is me and one other person. Between us, we have to cover 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 at night, Monday to Friday, and weekends as well. Because of this, and the fact that the company won't invest in call waiting for us, we can only take one call at a time. Our voicemail quite clearly states that we're a small team, but if you leave your name and number, we aim to get back to you within 5 minutes. Normally, people are rather understanding of our situation and are happy to wait for us to call them back, but as the world is full of impatient a-holes, we often get voicemails just criticizing us. Now, this happened today and I've been wanting to react this way for a long while and finally got the opportunity to. Me and Jerk Cola are the cast of this story. They say in voicemail, This is bloody ridiculous. I was told to call this number. But what's the freaking point of telling him people to call if there's nobody to answer the phone? Then they call again, and I say, Hello, you're through the company name. Crackbear is speaking. How can I help you? Oh, so now you're gonna answer the phone. What is the point of having this number if you never bloody answer? Hey? Ah, did you leave us a voicemail? I've just listened to it, but unfortunately, you didn't leave any contact details, so I was unable to return your call. Thank you for calling back. How can I help? You should answer every call that comes through. Well, unfortunately, there are only two people in my team, including myself, and there tends to be only one of us in at a time. So if I answered every call, I'd end up having to keep putting people on hold, and that really doesn't seem fair. Regardless though, you're through at the moment, and I'm happy to help you however I can. You can help me by doing your job and answering the phone when it rings. At this point, I'm like, freak you, lady, so sod it, I'll comply. Okay, sure, I'm sorry that I've annoyed you. I'll make sure to answer the phone whenever it rings. Now, how can I help? They start to describe their problem, and then the phone rings. Oh, I'm sorry, the phone's ringing. I'll have to place you on hold. Wait, 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 wait. Dude, hold. I then help the person calling, taking my sweet, sweet time, like going above and beyond just to keep this other b-hole waiting. Plus, you know it's nice to help people. So then I take the phone off hold. Thanks for your patience. Now you were saying, How dare you put me on hold? Especially, oh, I'm sorry, the phone's ringing again. I'll have to place you on hold. Beep, hold again. You can see where this goes. I think I managed to keep this going for about 15 to 20 minutes before she hung up. And I'm in for the next 10 hours. God, I hope she calls back. Uh, spoiler alert here, guys. Uh, she didn't call back, unfortunately. Our next story is posted by user Just a Simple Lady, titled "Sure, I'll count every part for you." So I work in an inventory company. We literally go to business, count their inventory, update their computer systems, and then my boss compiles a bunch of statistics about their inventory to discuss with management about how they're doing. Some of my boss's biggest business comes from buy sales or an inventory that is being done before the sale of a business in order to calculate the value of the current inventory, and therefore, how much the buyer has to pay the seller for it. This can be complicated because what counts as a good piece of inventory changes depending on the agreement the two companies reach. We're usually brought in as a neutral third party. My boss has been doing this stuff for 40 years and has way too many stories of sellers trying to get him to inflate their inventory or buyers trying to get him to devalue it. So a few years ago, a client, who will henceforth be known as buyer, contacts my boss about doing an inventory for a business he wants to buy. My boss had worked there for many years with the buyer's father, who had recently retired and passed down the business to buyer. My boss doesn't think very highly of buyer, but he is not going to turn away business just because he thinks someone is an entitled idiot. My boss informs buyer that he will need to see the sale agreement at least a week before the inventory so he can review it. He is not a lawyer, but has enough experience with these things 
that he can pass through the language on his own, and if there's something weird, the week gives him enough time to get an actual lawyer to look over the agreement or speak to the buyer or seller to go over things. Buyer agrees to send it as soon as the lawyer finishes fleshing it out. And guess what he doesn't? He doesn't do the week. For the next three months, my boss is all but begging Buyer to send him the sale agreement. Buyer apparently has the attention span of a three-year-old learning trigonometry because he agrees every time and then a thing came up and he forgot. My boss was even desperate enough to contact the seller to try to get the details, but the seller refused to even take the calls. The day before the inventory, my boss finally calls the buyer and says that if he doesn't have the agreement before 10pm that night, he was going to cancel the inventory. Buyer finally faxes the agreement over so my boss can get a handle on what exactly the buyer has agreed to buy from the seller. So by the time the date of the inventory arrives, my boss is starting the day severely annoyed because he had been up all night going over the sale agreement. Side note, because my boss is a bloody wonderful human, he often meets a group of us so we can get carpooled to the jobs together. Which meant I had a front row seat to the horror that was my boss's welcome by the buyer the day of the inventory. He says, Hey boss, thanks for coming out today, I really appreciate it. Well, it's what you're paying me for. Hey, before we get started with anything, I wanted to talk to you and the seller about the sales agreement. I just wanted to make sure everyone is on the same page before we get started. Oh, no need, we've got it all figured out. I'm sorry? Well, the seller is really hurting financially, and he has to take care of his sick father and his family, so I'm just going to buy the whole inventory. Uh, you're just going to buy everything? Yeah, that should make this simpler to you, right? You can just do the inventory like normal. Okay, you realize that you don't need to do that, right? Your agreement states that you only have to pay him for inventory that is below a certain age and in good condition. Oh, it's not a big deal if there's a few bad pieces here and there. It'll be a lot faster if you guys just count everything. Uh, I need to make sure you understand. Just from the casual look around I've had so far, I can tell you that a good portion of what I'm seeing is outdated, and in some cases completely destroyed. You won't be able to sell them- Well, I've taken a look around too, and I think you're exaggerating. Besides, whatever I can't sell here I can always post up on eBay. There's always somebody who wants this old stuff. So I want you to count everything. I understand that. And if you tell me you want to count everything, that's what we'll do. But I really think that- Look! I'm still going to pay you the same. So what the heck do you care about what I buy? You may know inventory, but you can't see the big picture here. I want everything counted and added into the inventory. It's not like you guys have to work any harder. Okay then, we're going to need to reword our contract. The current one specifies that we're doing the inventory according to the sales agreement you've reached. If you want us to count everything, then I just need to- I just said I wanted everything counted. I'm not paying a lawyer for you to change one line of a contract. Why are you making such a big deal of something like this? Just count the stuff. Now, as previously said, my boss had been doing this job for over 40 years, and he already walked in pretty annoyed by the buyer. And the buyer has now been messing around with the sales agreement for months forcing my boss to do a week's worth of planning in one night. And now, not only did he want to completely ignore all the work my boss had put in, but the buyer also did it with a ridiculous amount of snark and attitude while my boss was trying to make sure the buyer didn't end up paying for junk. Here's where the malicious compliance comes in. My boss gives buyer his giant customer service smile, which has always scarily reminded me of the Grinch, and says, All right then, you want us to count everything? We'll count everything. And then came back to our crew and announced, Everyone, choose a section. We're counting everything. Broken piece? Counted. A piece with a handwritten or ripped up part number? Counted. A kit with pieces missing? Counted. Pieces so old that they've become obsolete? Oh, counted. We counted each and every piece in the business, no matter what the condition of the part. A couple of months later, one of the crew asked my boss about what happened, and he burst out laughing. The buyer finally figured out, after about a month of nonsense and hearing his employees gripe, that about 30% of the inventory he bought was simply garbage, for a total of approximately half a million US dollars. My boss lost him as a client, and he regrets absolutely nothing. 
Our next story is written by user Upshot12, titled, I don't care who the frick hired you. So, I was working as an assistant for a photographer in the automotive advertising business. We had a big client in the auto supply end that supplied original equipment, OEM, parts for car manufacturers. Every car in the world uses these parts. The only problem is that the product never photographed well. It always looked the wrong color, bland, plasticky. It just didn't pop when photographed. So I took a few home with me and worked very hard to make them pop. I showed the ad agency my technique and the client loved it. And that's how we photographed them from now on. It saved them a ton of money on expensive retouching, pre-digital days. They liked it so much that they would fly me to events around the country to make their product look good. They would even send their product to me so I could make them look good and then send them around the world to different events. The art director asked me if my technique would work on motion film. Again, this was pre-digital. I told him it would. He asked me if I could work with them on a TV ad that they were going to do and I said yes. He told me to be at such and such studio and what time to be there for pre-production meeting. I showed up early and there was only one other person there and he told me his name and that he was the director of the commercial. I told him my name and what my job was going to be. He said he didn't care who the fudge hired me, that he was the boss and I would do what he told me. I said no problem. We had the meeting and we were to start shooting the following Monday. I showed up Monday morning and he told me to start doing whatever it was that I do. He also mentioned that if he didn't like it, he would scrap it. I said no problem. I started doing my thing and he would come by and make some snide comment, then walk away. The next day, the setup was done being built and the product was ready. I set up the product and the director started to light the product and kept saying it looked like crap. I told him that if he moved one light to here, another there, he stopped me right there and said again that he didn't care who fudge and hired me and to shut the fudge up. The art director showed up just after that happened and he said that it didn't look as good as it did in the still photos that we had done previously. I told him that it was the lighting style and that they were using. He told the director to let me light it after some grumbling, then said okay. I started to light it and it was looking good. The art director had to take off and he had brought another art director with him, a new but experienced guy. As he was leaving, he called us together and in front of the director and the new art director, he said, I don't want one single frame of this film shot unless OP says that it is okay. The director was ticked, livid and irate. And then the art director said to the director, I'm the guy who fudge and hired him. Then he left. Now on commercials, just as it is with movie making, time is money. I made sure to take my sweet time and cost the director a lot of money. The commercial looked great and I was brought in on many other commercials. The director was not though. I'm sure he knew what the director had said about me, but it was great to see the director's face fall. And our last story comes from Goroncraft, titled, You Have to Eat With Your Cutlery. Pretty old story, but I realized it's some fun, innocent, malicious compliance. Back in the day, we would often visit our auntie and uncle, and when we did, we would get pancakes at a local restaurant and occasionally take them to go. This one time, my nephew had big pancakes folded and filled with all sorts of things, and he digs in with his hands. Everyone at the table tells him he has to eat with his cutlery, so he complies. He picks up his knife and fork and continues eating with his hands, now also holding his knife and fork but not using them. Everyone got a laugh out of it. <laughs> hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Tell me what you think of it in the comments and I'll give you a reply. Um, besides that, I hope you have a good day and I'll see you later. Bye.